We're going to go over um, section 7.2, uh, the law of sines, in the case where we have two angles and one side, depending on the position. Now, um, this is your theorem, the law of sines. And um, alpha, beta, and gamma are your angles, and they should add up to 180 degrees. A, B, and C are your sides. Okay, and this property, you can also write this as A, A over sine of alpha if you want. You'll see it both ways, depending on where you look. So both are, I'm just flipping, uh, flipping it. This is called the transitive property when you have something like this. The transitive property. So I don't have to use all three. I can use this with this, or I can use the B with the C part, or I can use the um, A with the C part. So this is called the transitive property. Okay, the first example we're going to solve is um, side um, angle angle. So we have one side, two angles next to each other. And it's very important that you draw your triangle right. So I normally just draw a triangle like that. And when you label your triangle, remember that if your alpha is here, the side across from alpha is your A. If your beta is here, then the side across from beta is here. And if your gamma is here, the side across from uh, gamma is C. So make sure you label your triangle correctly. Then all we're going to do is find, um, can we find gamma right away? Since we already have two angles, we know this adds up to 180, so 40 plus 60 plus our gamma, these are all degrees, should equal 180. So we know that gamma equals 80 degrees. So if I I'm gonna put, um, erase this a little bit and put this in here. So uh, alpha was 40. Gamma is 80, and my beta is 60 degrees. So those are the angles here. Now, I have to find the sides. Well, I already have A. So what makes this nice is I'm going to I'm gonna use my sine of alpha over A because I have the information for both. Then I also have to use my sine of beta because I have information for beta. So the first one I'm going to use is sine of alpha over A equals sine of beta over B. Now I'm going to fill in everything. So we have sine of 40 over A, which is 4. A equals 4. Equals sine of beta equals 60 over B. Okay, and you cross multiply. And I'm going to move the B up here. So that's going to be B equals... Do the 4 up here, so I have 4 sine of 60 over, and I'm going to move, the, I'm switching places with the B and the sine of 40, is sine of 40. And use your calculator and get approximate value of, what is the B going to be, 5.39, so it's approximately 5.39 is B. Okay, and then the last one we have to find is our C. So I'm still going to use the sine of alpha over A, and I'm going to use, um, so I'm going to do sine of alpha, which is 40 over 40. My side across from 40 is 4, and then I'm going to do gamma, and gamma we know is 80. So we have sine of 80 over C. Cross multiplying, we get C equals 4 
sine of 80 degrees over sine of 40 degrees. And use your calculator and you should get approximately 6.13. And then you put it back on your um, um, triangle. What was it? 6.13. And just kind of look. The side across from 40, the smallest angle should be the smallest side and so on. Okay. Okay, the next one we're going to do is very similar, but it's the uh, angle side angle triangle where we have alpha equals 35, beta equals 30, uh, 15 degrees, and we have C equals 5. So when I normally draw my triangles, I don't really care how they look. I usually draw them like this. That's not an accurate one. The book does it this way, something like that. Um, but then I'm not a visual person, so I tend to just make my triangles the same on all of them and then do the algebra on it. So my alpha is 35, and the side across from alpha is my A. My beta is 15 degrees, and the side across from 15 degrees is called B. And my gamma, I don't know what that is, but the side across from gamma is 5. Now, if you notice, I don't have um, anything to use here until I find what gamma is. And when I subtract these two angles here from 180, I'm going to get 130. Once I have this, I have the information. So this is 130. So I'm going to have to use my sine of 130 over 5 to start. And then I can either get my A or my B. So let's start with um, A. So we have sine of 35 over A. And we're going to cross multiply again. So A equals uh, 5 times sine of 35 over sine of 130. Be careful here also when you do this. Um, there's a tendency when you're doing this not to write the sign here. So some students will write this as just over 30. And that would they will give you the wrong answer. So just make sure you write it as sine of 130, and that's going to give you approximately uh, 3.74. So that's going to be our A, 3.74. And just by looking, you should know that B is going to be pretty small because it has the smallest angle. And we're going to do the same thing there, sine of 130 over 5 equals sine of 15 over B cross multiply and you will get 1.69 approximately that's how you do the approximate okay and that's the simple cases of the law of sines where you have two angles and a side the next video is going to be the ambiguous case, and um, that one is the one that you really need to. Uh, we're going to work all on. We're going to work in class on the whole law of signs, the ambiguous case. It's the hardest one.